Uh, yeah, you still got it. I, oh, the Barb, whip. I know what this is, Barb, don't you? After I had my <laughs> knee operation, her dad saw me. I had like this cane, you know, the, the hospital game. He said, what do you do that? And he said, no, next day, this is what he brought me. I've had it ever since. I love that guy. Okay. Really? My you, dad gave you that? Dad went out and bought it for me. He saw me walking and limping on that cane. And I, I've had it ever since. Oh. 20, 25 years now, I've had that thing. That okay, awesome. honey, you just graduated. Are oh, you ready? Okay. So, yeah, I just graduated from the day school. Um, you know, I, I started my jewelry business at the day school just because um, the whole thing is like we, I needed, when I graduate, I get half a car. Yeah. So my parents give me half a car and then I have to pay for the other half. So I started my jewelry business at the day school. I remember Mr. Prince used to tell me that she'd drive you out to somewhere where you'd buy things. Yes. You'd buy and, things. Um, <laughs> and I just, all these years, I've just, I'm still doing it. And uh, so it's really great to be able to, to do that as well as, um, you know, I went to Purnell the um out in New Jersey it's this all girls boarding school in New Jersey it was really great to it was a great place where it's just this very sisters like very family oriented uh -huh. um you live on campus it's a very it's a good art school there was drama there was literally <laughs> drama um <laughs> <laughs> a lot of drama and, uh, in high school <laughs> yeah and there's you know so it was it was a good school good good choice for me and um so I uh and then I did that for three years graduated then came back and I went to um an art school in New Jersey uh, I'm sorry in Miami uh -huh. um that's now a condominium <laughs> Um, but I majored, um, it's, it was a great two year art. It was a two year school, but what you learn in two years, um, or four years they teach in two. So, um, I went in there picking a major. So I majored in, um, fashion merchandising and that was a good choice for me because it kind of gives you you know, they train you for, you know, manager, like just different business skills and also art and fashion and all that. So I kind of got a wide range of, of things where I could, you know, at that point I was still trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And I just figured it out. <laughs> so, um, you know, and it was just, you know, it's funny. I was like watching your, your other videos. It's like, um, this whole, my whole life was just trying to figure me out, like where I would best fit. And I think, um, so after I graduated from International Fine Arts College down in Miami, um, I came back home. And I just, um, I actually went, I got a job at Ralph Lauren, right on North Avenue. And they were literally building that store. And so we started like right at the bottom. And I know like just listening to my dad with, you know, um, his business and everything, he always ends up starting from the bottom and work like Revlon and all this, you know, a headhunter and all that. Like he has this way of like starting from the bottom and working his way up. And it just, you learn a lot by that. It's sort of like building your character and building, learning the business, you know, in all areas of it. And um, so, uh, I'm nervous. How long were you? <laughs> How long were you with, uh, long were you with uh, Ralph Lauren? Ralph Lauren. So we really, literally um, built that up. I was there for a good few years. Uh -huh. um, 
Um, I started customer service and then they um, promoted me to run the children's department. Um, and that was really great because I, I knew all the moms and then I got to know the kids and I got to see them kind of grow and um, sort of transform and all that. Uh, and I, I think the, the one thing, and I also want to add, you know, I loved, you know, going through school, you know, having this kind of learning disability, um, that was, it was like the name, like I, I, I had it in a head, in my head that I had a disability and it wasn't until just recently that, um, like I, this whole time I thought there was something wrong with me. And it wasn't until just recently that it's like, um, there's nothing wrong. I just learn differently. And I love that, um, you know, my little sister, Olympia is working there now and she's kind of standing for these kids that need a little extra help. So, um, what did I do? Uh, so I, I actually, I, I ran the children's department and I just got to be able to be this, um, you know, just, you know, you have to sort of dress the part, You're like these kids and it's like you, you have this platform to be able to like, all right, you know, what do you want to be today? Like, how do you want to dress? Like, where are you going? And, and you got to sort of take their personality and give them sort of a boost of, of courage and kind of dress them the part, no matter where they're like, you know, for their life and for their day and for a party or, you know, just how to be your best self in, you know, different situations. And um, so I thought that was really fun. And then I just kind of, um, I ran a nightclub, you know, down in, at 251 for a bit and then my dad passed away. And so I guess, you know, um, fast forwarding, I actually just, um, just a year ago, I went, you know, I got into real estate. I got my real estate license. I was still doing my jewelry on the side, still building that up. I actually had a store um, right on your street for a good three years. And um, that was fun to just, and it was like kind of the same time Olympia started. So um, yeah, it just, you've always been kind of right there in my corner, you know, through my journey. And, um, you know, with the day school supporting me in different areas and, and all that. Um, so after I did get my real estate license um, for a bit and did that, but I was also doing my jewelry. And then just a year ago, um, uh, one of my real estate mentors took me to this introduction to, I don't know if you've heard of this, the Landmark Forum, right, where right. it's it's now globally, but it's probably one of the, the number one transformative type of um, work that you could do, like personally, professionally, all that, and how to sort of, um, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but kind of leaving the past in the past and starting fresh, empty, meaningless with nothing and just being able to create where you are now and just being able to, with the different distinctions and all that. And, and you know, I think through my whole life, I like, I had to, I felt like I had to get somewhere or I had, there was the pressure of, um, 
getting somewhere or doing something or, or whatever. And there was just so much pressure in life. And it's, um, I think what I learned is that like, you literally can create it. You can create your own life. You can create whatever you want to, it's sort of being, if you want to be happy, you just be happy, you know, or just enjoy, you want to have joy in your life or, you know, it's like you just, that feeling of being happy. Um, and then like, uh, just good things just sort of show up or like opportunities show up or even like, the opportunity is something completely outside of like in your blind spots. Like I didn't even realize that there were blind spots until good things show up kind of out of the blue. <laughs> um, and it just like the whole sort of way of being and sort of they taught you integrity and they taught you, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, I finally got what you've been teaching. Um, and just like how to diff just like, just how to, um, and it, it's, and being, and, and giving that sort of positive energy out into the world and, and, um, you know, in that jewelry. Um, so it's, uh, let's see. So I literally did, when I did the forum, like, I was, I was able to be able to fit into my family instead of just be a part of it. Like I, I felt like I didn't have to be like them. I could be my, by myself. I could be me and not enough, which was kind of big, <laughs> you know? And so like, if I could be that way with my family, I could be that way in this big world that we're dealing with and be able to, you know, if I'm dealing with something like what they said was like, um, there's a trick that if you see someone kind of dealing with something, you're able to help them. And then when you help, other people, all of a sudden, the stuff that you're dealing with suddenly evaporates. And it's kind of extraordinary. Uh -huh. um, so it just, I've been, my path and journey has been very, um, uh, how do you say, um, spiritual you know, and very grounding in a sense where it's like, you know, I'm not, you know, a, oh, what do you say? I'm not doing like, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, a part of the CNN or an, I don't have a hedge fund or, you know, whatever. I have a beautiful hedge outside my house. But, you know, it's like I'm doing something more of like empowering other people and I'm just tying it into my jewelry and other things that I'm doing. Um, right now at this moment, I, through the pandemic, I was just like, my world just kind of changed a little bit. And so I ended up getting a job um, at a salon in Palm Beach, right down the street from the school um, at Edward Fleming Salon. And I'm the shampoo girl. <laughs> you know, and I just, I just, you know, put people at ease and I fold towels and I sweep and I'm just like, just chilling. And just, you know, but this whole my mindset is like, every day is a new day and something new shows up and, you know, let's see what happens next. And um, so I'm also, I actually am also reading 
this great book. Um, I wrote it down. It's called The Book of Joy with um, it's it's about um, the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu and how they um, interviewed each other. It, it's it's really good. Um, it's kind of shifting your perspective and thinking instead of thinking lack and um, you know fault. It's it's a way of like shifting your thinking of like a wider perspective of like benefit and abundance and, and just good stuff. And, um, and it, I also through the whole landmark, um, you know, I did the forum and then I went ahead and did the advanced course and then the self-expression and leadership. And, um, and what's funny is like, I did this whole curriculum for living also the communication course, um, only because I wanted to, you know, go where my friends were. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, we're, <laughs> how did I get here? And I have to just, you know, so I was like, but the self-expression and leadership was, we had to create a project that, that takes, that uses your community basically. And so I did, um, uh, it's, um, I was standing for kids with learning disability and, and sort of you create this whole project and then you get, you know, community involved and people. And so I started, and it was actually very healing for me um, cause I learned, first of all, I wasn't alone. And there was like these, I was interviewing um, kids and adults that had learning disabilities and like how they dealt with it and what they, how they filtered it into good. And, and also, um, you know, reached out, did interviews with people that, you know, people like Mrs. Greco who were coaches and, and, you know, mentors and, and all that, and how they just kind of helped guide us in, you know, what their techniques were and, and support system was and stuff. And um, I thought it was really informative. And also what's interesting is that um, it was networking, like these, like you create, I created this group on Facebook and then all of a sudden, these people got inspired by other people that I interviewed. And it all of a sudden, it just created, you know, it was just sort of larger than life. You know, it just, it just became, it kind of took on a life of its own and, and everything. And it was pretty extraordinary how, like, I just was kind of the connector and all these people just learn from each other. It was cool. And, um, and then afterwards the communication course, what I got was my listening changed. Like, like I listened with the things that I had going on inside my head. So like I was anticipating when someone was talking to me, I was anticipating like I was listening to what I was going to say instead of actually hearing what the person was actually saying. It's very important. And it was like, really it, my world opened up, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, is, you know, the rackets that go inside your, you know, maybe it's just me. But, so many people do that when they're listening to someone. They're not really listening. They're thinking, what am I no. going to say next? Oh, yes. Right. See that in school all the time. <laughs> and then as soon as you sort of give up like this voice or stuff inside your head and just kind of be with that, like being with that person or like being with you is a completely different experience than like being inside my head. Absolutely. <laughs> That's one. So it's pretty extraordinary. <laughs> so anyway, so here we are. 
Um, yeah. Do you have any questions, honey? Do you remember anything about the school that you remember that uh, that you'd like to ask or comment on or anything? I've I've learned to be a little bit more resilient, courageous, and strong, and and all that, and just like I'm a little bit clear headed. Um, and I think if I could go back, not that I want to, <laughs> but um, I think I think whatever I learned and ex my experience with the the you know my life at the day school and my class and and trying to fit in and all that, it's like what's great is like I don't have to fit in anywhere I, if that pressure if I could just let go of that and just be in the moment with people it's like we're trying to fit in and we don't have to all you have to um, be yourself, honey. all you have to be is yeah yourself. all you have to be yeah yourself. and I didn't think that was enough until now okay um and I I think I've and I I think what's what I regret is that like, where I was so much in my head that I missed the moments. There was a lot of moments that I missed out on. And I just, if, if someone, I guess if I know, I think you said once like in speech class or whatever, I pre, or maybe it was Mrs. Greco. She said, if you stand up there, you don't look at the whole class, you know, you're not trying to inspire like 50 or, you know, 30 people in the class. If you could just touch one person and connect with that one person, you know, you've changed the world. You've got your point across. You remember. And I think just giving yourself that space and releasing that pressure is so um it, it's it's so much better than adding pressure <laughs> you know speeches do you remember those speeches uh, yes i i i can't forget them <laughs> i i actually i think yeah i i, I don't ever get rid of those yeah. Those were the highlights. They were the highlights. Yeah. Do you remember your final speech? I don't, but you do. That was a blur. Uh -huh. <laughs> was it? I know I did a report on dad. You did one on him. I did. I think you're, from what I remember, that was how many years ago is this, honey? No, that would have been how many years ago. But I think you did it on jewelry did i i think oh, that's so boring <laughs> you gotta promise me that once this covid's all over we're gonna go to lunch i okay. would love to is that a promise i would love to okay now Mrs. i'm so happy that dad gave you a cane and you're oh, using no, it a, this is it that's so awesome yeah that was i'll never oh. forget Amy said, what's that you have? I said, what's my cane? She says, that's It makes funny. your life a little bit easier. Oh, it is. I, said, I love it. Look at it. <laughs> yeah. So, what we're going to do, honey. Wisdom. But don't forget, we have a problem. We have a lunch date, okay? Okay. As soon as this COVID is all over. Okay. Yeah. Thank, no, thank I you. just, I, I love, um, I, I just, I love what you got the day school. I, I just, it was good growth for me and and the teachers were amazing and I just I, I I think that's I was more connected to the teachers yeah. because they accepted me than just to try and kind of fit into my class right but the teachers were like because I knew that they were going to help me get ahead <laughs> or give me what I need to you know just but with Mrs. Get on Greco, with my life. With Mrs. Greco, you were always number one. <laughs> oh, no. She's a legend. Yeah.